Okay, I'm working on a small liquid amber tree that's got a pretty bad shape to it. It's a double trunk tree and it's a little too crowded. I just took a cut here. And the reason I stopped to get the video out is we had two branches side by side and as you can see here, if this was allowed to stay, each of these would have grown on each other and pushed it apart and it would have split all the way through here. So right now, I want to talk about where is the best place to make this cut. I cut it off cleanly here. I cut up most of the way with a chainsaw, carefully not to nick this, and then finish it with a handsaw. But I've still got a little bit of room in through here. Now, some people would make their cut all the way down here, which would expose a much larger wound. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to either use the handsaw or carefully with a chainsaw and stop again and come up to this point right here and make an angle cut so it'll shed the water, but it'll allow this portion of the tree to continue to grow without being embedded into this. Not a big deal, but as this grows, it'll grow around this. And if I cut it off to here, then it won't be, uh, the future damage won't be quite so bad. And a secondary thing that I'm gonna have to do is if you look up in through here, you've got a double top developing here that is actually being pushed apart, and that um, that needs to be removed. Okay, there's the finished cut. You notice that I did not cut into this branch up here. I cut with the chainsaw right up to a spot where I stopped, then I finished it off with the, uh, the handsaw. This portion up here is uh, part that was growing into it, and it just sort of broke off, but I didn't cause any damage to this part of the tree. I kept the cut as small as possible, but allowing for this portion of the tree to grow back up and over. In time, there may be some decay that sets into this part right here, but this is the uh, the best option for uh, this particular, particular cut. Now I gotta get up there and take that thing out. Okay, different perspective, I'm up in the tree here. This is the branch that's got to come out. You see where it's rubbing right down in through here? And it's a real tight fit down low there. It's a, kind of an odd tree. It should have a single leader that's going up and it's got multiples here. I don't see where it was topped before, but it's possible that there was a cut over there and this is what erupted from the, the top. Yeah, I can see, see one cut over on that side. Had this tree never had any pruning done to it, um, it probably would have been more like this side, you know, just a, a tall, slender leader. Let me get this out of here and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, I got that cut done. And as you can see here, it was pushing right there and eventually would have caused a split. I, uh, I have to clean up that cut just a little bit more. That was as close as I wanted to get with the chainsaw without a little better position. But uh, I didn't do a lot to this tree, but I really changed the future of this tree in terms of um, tight crotches and what will eventually happen to it. It's kind of interesting. It's a bit of brush up in the tree that's still got all its leaves on it. And when a branch dies or breaks off in a tree and doesn't go through the natural abscission of fall uh, foliage drop, then the leaves, they adhere to the branches. So if, if, you if you see branches sticking up in a tree and the rest of the tree is, has lost all of its leaves because it, it's deciduous, but you've got pieces that are just hanging up there like flags, that means that they broke off. Same with hangers. If you, uh, if you prune a tree and you don't get all the hangers out of it and uh, you walk away from it, then it loses all of its leaves come fall, when everything is bare, every single branch that you left up in the tree, albeit little, is going to stick out like a sore thumb. So get your hangers out of the trees. Okay, finally, here's the last cut. You saw it was sticking up just a little bit too high. Now, a lot of guys will leave those and say it's good enough, but the idea is you make the smallest cut possible, retaining the branch bark ridge. Cut it at an angle to deflect water. Don't make 
big flush cuts ever. But you want it to uh, to reflect the, the the quality tree work that we're supposed to be doing. So do the best you can, make the very best cuts that you can, and think about what you're doing and why you're doing it. That's most important. Why are you making the cuts in that tree? What are you trying to accomplish? What is the purpose of the pruning? Thanks for watching. And there the tree is, all done. Not a whole lot different, but you can see how much I took out of it. And the future of this tree will be considerably different.